<laughs> yo, what? So y'all, how y'all doing? Five most terrifying children's cartoons from around the world. So one of y'all requested this. I think I was hyped. I ain't gonna lie. I like, you know, just peep what's going on on here. And like, I saw like a, a pretty a good amount of recommendations. Like, you know, I'm pretty sure everything that I'm upload today. I mean, shit, I just got back from school. So I don't, I'm gonna try and react to everything y'all requested. And like, so everything that's I'm gonna upload today is just shit y'all requested. So I appreciate that. I was hyped that y'all were just even recommending me. Shit, it makes my life easier. Like, you know what I mean? So anyways, this is one that y'all requested. I saw the thumbnail. I don't. Oh shit, bro! How are you gonna have like this type of like audio? But number five, Farthingwood. This type of landing subject. the number five spot on this list is the Animals of Farthingwood. I don't know this it's cartoon. It's a cartoon from the early '90s and originated mainly in France and Britain, but also came from Belgium, Germany, and Spain. That's probably why. It ran from the sixth of January, 1993, to the twenty-first of December, 1995, and showed the adventures of the animals from, you guessed it, Farthingwood. This whole group of cute little critters lived in Farthingwood, but That's humans came and destroyed the entire forest. Like a real place? So, they embark on a journey to White Deer Park, a nature reserve, where, of course, they would be safe. But things take a turn for the worst, when in one episode, all the field mice in the group get impaled and stuck on a thorn bush. It gets worse, too. A couple episodes later, a female pheasant in the group is shot and killed by a human. They run from the human, and moments later, realize she's gone. Her husband, Mr. Pheasant, then decides to be the hero and goes back for her. But he gets shot too when he freezes <laughs> up after seeing his own wife plucked and cooked with a group of hungry humans feasting on her. Her wife? And just to note or one his... more thing, there's 39 <laughs> episodes with a total of 24 on-screen deaths, mainly consisting of main characters. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Number 4, The Moomins. This show came from Poland, and initially, when you watch it, nothing seems wrong My until this getting clapped, left it right. thing called a Grok pops up. It kind of reminds me of Muck from Pokemon. He could also pass for Grimace, too. Dad thing was clapping fools? No way. <laughs> Imagine dying to that. What the fuck? But the scariest thing about the Grok is how it moves around and the sounds it makes. It kind of just moans and slowly moves across the screen. Also, it kills everything it goes around. In one episode of the Moomins, a butterfly flew near the Grok and died, just from breathing the same air. Maybe it's just a reminder for the kids to brush their teeth, or their morning breath will be just as deadly. Also, later on in the series, the Grok comes into the Moomins' Homie house got a strap? to have them barricade themselves in their own house and grab weapons in pure fear. Number 3. Alma. This short film looks surprisingly similar to Pixar's type of animation, doesn't it? Well, that's because it's from an animator who helped heavily on their movies. His name's Rodrigo Blas, and most of this film is pretty innocent and not too scary. It starts off with the main character named Alma seeing a doll that looks exactly like her in a nearby toy shop that's been closed. Then things get bad because she decides it would be pretty awesome if she broke into the shop and stole it. So, she does exactly that and breaks in, but on her way to the doll she wants, she sees a doll on a bike banging into the door over and over again, like it wants out. Unfazed by this, she reaches out to the doll to grab it, and then there's a flash, and she can't move. The only thing she can move is her eyes, so she glances around to see many other dolls moving their eyes in a similar fashion. Seconds later, she realizes that she's become the doll, and so has everyone else on the shelf. Oh, okay. Number two, the Bunny Up song. Ain't too trippy. The show is called Dot and the Kangaroo. It was made in Australia in 1977 and shows the animals of the outback. But during this one episode, something called the Bunny Up screams onto the TV screen, and a song starts playing with the lyrics. The Bunny Up's very bad, and the Bunny Up's very bold, and they tell me that the Bunny Up is now a thousand years old. You better hide very Bars. soon, or the Bunny Up's going to get you in the Bunny Up moon. Also, it says in the song that it's the most unpleasant monster that you have ever seen. What makes this even worse is that this bunyip thing has actually been seen, according to Aboriginal accounts, dating over a thousand years. Number one. This is the last one. This ain't that bad. I thought this was going to be like on some like horrible... It's got a lot of... I don't know, like, maybe the backstory of these like makes it worse, but this ain't like, you know... 
I'm chilling. I thought I was going to start tweaking, but... The Plague Dogs. If you watched Watership Down, then you know how messed up it is. Okay, this so this was really bad. basically that with dogs. The same filming studio, voice actors, and directors all worked on this adaptation, called The Plague Dogs. The first scene in this movie shows a dog drowning and its motionless body settling at the bottom. Wow, way to start a movie, huh? Anyways, if for some horrid reason you decide to keep watching, you'll see a scene where a hunter calls a dog and it starts running for him. He puts a shotgun down right before the dog leaps into his lap, but in the process the dog's paw pulls the trigger and shoots the hunter in the face. It then shows him covering his eyes in pain, blood dripping everywhere, and pieces of his face scattered. I'm sorry, if, if you get headshotted, you're dead. Like, right? Like, a shotgun? There's A shotgun does not do that to you. It's probably not that far away from his face, too. It's a shot. He's dead. That's a headshot. That's like, you know what I mean? That's no. All over the dog's fur. That's 100 points. After the dog sees this, oh. he flees in terror. Oh, he died. And okay, the cool. guy is never mentioned again in the movie, and his death has nothing to do with the plot. <laughs> it's like they just said, you know what would be great? <laughs> Putting a scene where some random dude gets his face blown off with a double barrel. All I care about is consistency and, you know, like, okay, like, he, he should have died. And he did die, so, you know. Because if that fool survived that, I would have been. Okay, anyways. Uh, yeah, this... <laughs> I have nothing to say. I have I have nothing to say.